Usain Bolt, the world's fastest man, winning several gold medals and perhaps solidifying himself as the greatest Olympian of all time. This video was created from the recommendation of one of my subscribers, so comment down below who you would like us to cover next. Regarding the format of this video, we're going to analyse the science to why Usain Bolt became the fastest man in the world and how he compares to the average man. Also, as a reminder, if you like the content, make sure to subscribe and comment down below who you would like us to cover next. Usain Bolt, a retired Jamaican sprinter, currently holds the records for the 100m, 200m and 4x100m relay race. He is one of the most decorated athletes of all time, with 23 gold medals notably 8 in the Olympics ranging across the sprinting events and 11 world championships. This makes him the most successful athlete in world championship athletics history. He has also won 5 silver medals, most of these being earned in the early part of his career pre-2007. He has also won only one bronze medal in the 2017 World Championships in London. Usain Bolt's records from 2009 still stand, achieving both the 100m and 200m records in the same World Championship Games. Achieving a time of 9.58 seconds in the 100m sprint and 19.19 seconds in the 200m sprint. If we look at the history of the 100m times in the last 30 years, we can see that athletes are typically getting stronger, more powerful and technically more acute, allowing them to achieve faster times. As a result, most likely following the trend, an athlete will eventually break Usain Bolt's famous records in both events. In comparison to his contemporaries, Usain Bolt is still by and large the fastest. If we look at his rivals, Justin Gatlin, he was finally able to beat Usain Bolt in the 2017 London World Championship Games. He has a PR of 9.74 seconds. In 2017 when he was finally able to beat Bolt, this was an abnormally slow race with Justin Gatlin winning the race in a time of only 9.92 seconds. Equally, his other rivals such as Asafa Pal, who is also from Jamaica, has a fastest time of 9.72 seconds and Tyson Gay from America who has the fastest set out of the three with a time of 9.69 seconds. Regarding their times, it can definitely be implied that being taller has some part in producing a faster time. Bolt himself is 6 foot 5 and all his rivals are around the 6 foot mark or taller apart from Tyson Gay who is 5 foot 9. Being taller benefits sprinters towards the end of a race allowing them to cover greater distances per stride as seen most notably with Usain Bolt towards the end of a race where he would peer across his opponents and seem to finish at ease. However, being taller does not typically imply a faster sprinter as an increase in height typically results in less acceleration at the start of races. This is seen pretty much in every race with Usain Bolt where he has a poor start due to his 6 foot 5 frame and typically makes up a huge amount of ground in the final 50 meters where his 27.8 miles per hour sprint speed dominates all competitors. If we look at most sprinters, they are very muscular and lean, allowing them to generate maximum muscular force whilst running without carrying any unnecessary weight. This is different compared to distance runners such as Kananisa Bakele and Mo Farah who are even more lean but have a lesser amount of muscle mass ensuring that they can run for long distances and have the endurance to complete 5000 and 10,000 meter runs. The main difference between distance runners and sprinters however is something called aerobic versus anaerobic capacity. Aerobic capacity is the highest amount of oxygen consumed during maximal exercise in their activity. This means that distance runners tend to have a very high aerobic endurance given their cardiorespiratory system the ability to supply oxygen to muscles for the whole duration of a race. Alternatively, sprinters have a high anaerobic capacity meaning the total amount of energy that can be generated without oxygen. This allows their muscles to function for a short period of time in the presence of lactic acid. This can easily be observed when watching a 100 meter race when sprinters take minimal breaths during the race and once they cross the line tend to cramp up. In addition to this, another difference would be the composition of their muscle fibres. There are two types of skeletal muscle fibres in the body. Type 1, which is a slow twitch, would be seen in marathon runners. These are designed for endurance, whereas type 2 muscle fibres are fast twitch, 
meaning that they are used for faster, more powerful movements such as sprinting. A high proportion of type 2 muscle fibers means sprinters can run extremely fast for a short period of time. However, in regards to Usain Bolt, is one of the major factors why he never ran the 400 meters despite practicing the event in training. When these muscle fibers contract, often they will interlock in a mechanism called cross bridging. This side of the physiology exceeds the purpose of this video. However, in basic terms, just describes how different fibers in the body interact and cause contraction. This is the end of the video now. Hope that this gave you an insight into the science behind why Usain Bolt was so great and able to become the fastest man in the world. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you like the content as this would help me produce a lot more videos in the future. And don't forget to comment down below what other athletes you would like me to cover in the future.